I think it's very difficult to be a parent of a child with a life-threatening illness. And I do wonder how these families keep up their spirits every day. Because every day there are questions. In the beginning you feel like, how am I ever going to make it through this? It's just, it's rare, it's confusing, it's hard to understand, and it's just hard to diagnose, and it's unfortunate. Your whole life changes. You don't know what you're going into and what's about to happen. And you just want the right medicine to be given and you want the right things to be done. You just look at a child that's sick and how can you not do everything that you can to find the cure? Our vision is no histiocytosis in the world. Andrew started by presenting with some sporadic vomiting. It was after two and a half days that he had gone down for a nap and woken up in the afternoon. And I went in to get him and he was jaundiced, head to toe. I mean, yellow like a highlighter. So I called the pediatrician and got in immediately and um, they drew labs and called me at home at six o'clock that night and said, you need to get down to Children's. By midnight, he was being admitted to the PICU. He was getting blood. They were putting lines in everywhere and said that he was in liver failure and he had a 50% chance of making it to the morning. All along they kept saying, there's this really rare disease and we're pretty sure it's not that. And we were like, okay. And that kind of kept being mentioned kind of in the background and as everything continued to get rolled out, inevitably they finally sent some slides up to Cincinnati Children's here and they came back and said that he had HLH. We, of course, started Googling it and trying to figure out what it was and the first site that came up was the Histio site, which was great. All of a sudden, you know, it just really opened the door for us and one of the nicest things was to see stories of survivors. Research is so important. Without that research, we wouldn't know what to do. And we only know how to use bone marrow from people today because of the research. The research tells us, okay, now we can use bone marrow or we can use peripheral stem cells and that's how we're finding cures and we're saving people. Well, the hardest part is not really being able to do very much for him. I think that's, you know, I say it's okay, it's okay, it's not okay. He's had two bone marrow transplants. He's had four central lines. He's had countless chemos. And then he's had every test done probably to check every organ in your body. One of the conversations that we had early on with his parents was should they go down another treatment path. They told me with tears in their eyes that they were able to let him go if what was planned was something that had little chance of success and would cause him to suffer. I told them that we would treat him like we would treat a patient having their first transplant. The doctors here are very happy with how well he is in consideration of everything he's been through. So we're cautiously optimistic that the third one's going to be the final one. I've definitely gotten a whole new perspective on life and I will never live life the same because I understand what's really important. I remember the doctors came in and they said they were with oncology and I knew that wasn't good and they told me that she had Langerhorn cell histiocytosis. They said it was a very rare disease, but we were fortunate there was a doctor at Vanderbilt who was working closely with other doctors that were working on that disease. She had disease in her liver, it was in her GI tract, in her ears, in her skin, and because of her age, she was 15 months old when she was diagnosed, and so it's in a major organ, and if you're under two years old, it's considered life-threatening, and so they were very aggressive in how they treated it. I think what people need to understand is that although this is a rare disease that they may never have heard of, it could affect someone in their family, a child or a grandchild, next week. It's important to offer these children and their families hope and effective treatments and the possibility of living a normal life. I want her to, you know, be able to run and play and just be happy like other kids. 
I really believe that because of her experience that she will be a hard worker and she will want to give back. She really will. I'm thankful that the doctors could help. Mm, me too. The only way we can find a cure and someday prevent the disease is by working together to fund the cure. The bottom line is that research will provide the knowledge that will allow these things to, to happen. Every day that I come into work, I know that I have the possibility to help a child with histiocytosis and that in addition, I can help create new knowledge through research to make things better for all of these kids. I'm very grateful for all the people that are working really hard that I've never met and may never meet, but I just want to say thank you. Thank you so much for everything that you've done. We're very grateful and the work is paying off. Without those selfless angel donors out there, Andrew wouldn't be here today. So, you know, I've learned that you really can make a difference. Thank you for helping me feel better.